Hello, I'm Judith Arcana, and here's another of the tiny movies. Tiny movies made to tell you folks about Hello, This is Jane, my new book, a collection of linked fiction. Stories, in other words. In this particular tiny movie, I'm going to read a bit from one of the stories, and I've chosen this one because it's the one that's focused uh, almost entirely on the time that the abortion service was busted by the Chicago police. Um, we, cho we, meaning the publisher and I, chose May 3rd as our official publication date because that was the date of the bust, May 3rd, 1972. Now here's a bit that I'm going to read to you from the story called Soon to be a Major Motion Picture. In this, one of the Janes, years later, is talking to a film crew. They are wanting to make a movie about the bust. She's now describing um, what actually happened in the lockup the night um, after the afternoon that the Janes were arrested. The woman I call Angie is a guard. Angie touches Dina's elbow to steer her around. Her hair is metal gray, blunt cut, short, and she's got a faded eagle tattoo, wings spread around her right wrist. She smells like lit cigarettes. She tells Dina how to roll her fingertips, I still remember this, how to roll her fingertips so the prints won't smudge, and hands her a coarse paper towel for the slime that gets the ink off. She hangs a numbered plate around Dina's neck when she directs her to stand still and turn sideways for the mug shots. She guides Dina to the cells, a setup like office cubicles, really, at an insurance company. Only this big room has a cement floor and a really high ceiling and glaring lights overhead. The cells are arranged in groups with narrow lanes between them. They have metal doors and walls, and their ceilings are like sections of chain-link fence, painted black and laid down on top of metal boxes. The walls don't go all the way down. They're like the walls in a public toilet, and there's a constant draft at floor level. It's after midnight. Angie's gruff decency is in her voice when she says, I'll put you in with your partner. She unlocks a cell and points Dina into it with her chin. Dina's puzzled until the door swings open and Linda, a new young Jane she'd met at the front that morning, jumps up to embrace her. Linda's about 18, a college student working the front for the first time that day. She'd been alone in the cell before Angie brought Dina. All around them, women are banging on the metal walls, wailing, screaming, their banshee voices ricochet in the big room. Six Janes in pairs were in three cells in a row. They could talk, call out, confer and reassure each other. After a while, the cell-to-cell -cell talking over the walls stops. Linda and Dina take inventory. Their cell is maybe nine by five feet. There's a slab of wood attached to one metal wall. It's about six feet long and 18 inches wide for sitting or sleeping if the luck of exhaustion shuts out noise and light. There's a filthy little sink and toilet at one end. Their communication moves from silence to wisecracks to worries, then back to silence. I chose to read from that particular story for one of the tiny movies because I know that already in the United States, choosing abortion, making the choice to abort a pregnancy, is illegal or very nearly illegal for many, many, many people in lots of places. And I know that if slash when Roe is overturned, 
that will be true over the whole country. There are already people who are doing abortions illegally, dangerously, risking their freedom, perhaps their lives, to help others who need abortion health care. And surely, if Roe is overturned, that will happen all across the country. And it's important to know our history. We can use it. We can change it. It's good to know. Good to have.